For this video, I'm going to be covering uh, the second part. This is part two of the moist cooking methods. So we're going to be um, looking at simmering and boiling and steaming and blanching. When it comes to simmering and boiling, we're talking about the difference between little bubbles and big bubbles. So simmering uses a lower heat and it has much uh, smaller bubbles and the temperature of the water is below uh, below the boil. When you are boiling water, you're probably going to have your temperature up kind of high and you should see big rolling bubbles that come and break the surface. When you are simmering, you should only see a few small bubbles and maybe a few little ripples. This is important because there are food items that will burn on the bottom. Soups should not be boiled. Um, boiling the vegetables, even though it's just a, a tiny little temperature difference, really will make a big difference in your overall product. So when you do meat and certain vegetables, it can make them kind of stringy, kind of rubbery. So you want to do a simmer chili, potato soups, making stock, things can burn on the bottom and things can kind of kind of turn bad. There is a video here. So with the boiling, again, higher heat, we're looking at a temperature at 212 degrees, as we talked about in the, in the earlier part of this unit. Water boils at 212 and it turns to steam and then evaporates. So we are not dealing with very high temperatures here and we're not ever going to deal with a temperature high enough to actually brown something. Um, you don't really want to use a lid because things can boil over, particularly starchy things. You can put a lid on your pot to bring it to a boil because it'll hold the heat in. But once you add your veg, uh, once you add your starch item in, you don't, you just leave the lid off. Green vegetables like broccoli um, or green beans, I do actually kind of use a lid for those. They're not as starchy and they have less of a tendency to kind of boil over. So within the PowerPoint, um, the presentation, there is a video there on boiling, but essentially a good amount of water, a higher temperature, big rolling bubbles, and watch to make sure that you don't overflow. So when we're looking at the big difference between boiling and simmering, um, we are looking at higher temperature and larger bubbles for boiling and simmering is going to be on a lower temperature. Simmering generally happens over a long period of time. If you're making chili, if you're making soup, you can generally simmer that for many, many hours. Boiling, it's kind of hot and it's kind of fast. Well, it's hot for water. Um, cooking methods. So when it comes to boiling, that's something that you're probably going to drain the water off of. So pastas, potatoes, um, those kind of things. Blanching is, uh, is a great and wonderful uh, cooking method when it comes to particularly green vegetables. So in blanching, blanching you drop a food item into a rolling hot boil for a short period of time. The time depends on the hardness of the uh, food item that you are cooking. When I do green vegetables, um, asparagus, it's about a minute. So it pretty much comes up to a boil. I set a timer or count to about 60 and then it comes out. For hairy covers, the little bitty tiny French green beans, they go a little longer. For bigger green beans, um, I'm, generally I'll country cook those down for many hours. So I don't usually blanch those, but I might particularly if I'm going to freeze them. So when I pull things in from the garden, um, my, my greens, my kale, my collards, my green beans, I'll usually blanch them and then flash freeze them so then I can process them later. Sometimes I cook them down and freeze them already just cooked like my greens, my kale and collard greens. I will go ahead and do that so that way I can just heat it up and I don't have to worry about it. But um, blanching is a partial way of cooking something and it makes green vegetables bright and tender. And so for sugar snap peas or snow peas, before I add them to the stir fry, I'll just do this really quickly. Um, the green beans, the asparagus, and usually I cook them further in a, in a dry cooking method to add flavor. So for my asparagus, I would blanch it. So I drop it in that hot, hot bath. When you see the color turn bright green, um, the water needs to be very salty. So I do, uh, the salt not only adds flavor to the vegetable, but it also stabilizes the chlorophyll and the color within the vegetable. So the hot boiling salt water comes up, the vegetables turn a really bright green, they get the right texture. I just pull one out and bite it to see. And then, and when it's perfect, I pull it out and plunge it down into the ice bath. The ice bath stops that cooking process immediately uh, so that it doesn't overcook and it also retains that bright green. So I know a lot of my students like to take the asparagus and do the bacon wrapped asparagus or grilled asparagus. Um, I, I do that. And then sometimes I'll also, if I have like 
pan seared or, or um, um, like a steak and I've got garlic and salt and butter in the pan. I pulled the steak out. I'll take the blanched asparagus and throw it into that pan, put some Parmesan cheese on there and kind of rotate that around and then get that nice like garlic butter goodness uh, and reheat it. You can put garlic butter and um, put it under the broiler. There's a lot of ways and things that you can do with it. But if you cook something like asparagus just straight from raw with just a dry cooking method, you lose the tenderization, you get the flavor, but it takes a long time. And sometimes the vegetable will kind of turn army green and dark green, and it will be so much prettier presentation wise and have a better flavor if you blanch it first. So it can be used as a par cooking method. You can partially cook it and finish it later. You can freeze it. Uh, there's lots of ways that you can do that. Um, in this video here, there is a video on how to blanch, but I think I did a pretty good description. If you would like to see that video that is available here in the presentation. So as far as the review questions go, I did describe to you, um, so I think you can answer this question, but the pot of water is rolling boiling and they added a quite a bit of salt. Remember, the salt is not just for seasoning, it's also to stabilize the color. It is very important to cut your vegetables evenly. We've talked about this in all of our mise en place lessons. You want to make sure that your vegetables are going to cook at the same rate. So you don't want to have a carrot that's this big and one that's this big and super thin and super tiny versus like big and chunky. Um, things just need to cook at the same at the right time. Also, if you are doing um, a something like asparagus, it only takes a minute in the water and you're doing something like potatoes or, or carrots or the green beans, it's going to take longer, then you probably don't want to add them in together. Make sure you are adding things at the proper, proper time so that everything cooks and comes together evenly. Um, the vegetables are done when you pull one out and you take a bite and it is to your liking. So um, you want to make sure that you get that to your light, liking. It has a nice little crispness to it. So this, uh, this video note here just kind of uh, reiterates what I've just said. So uh, there's, this is also a visual description here of what I covered just a couple of minutes ago. And then last, we're going to talk about steaming. So steaming the food items are not actually in the water. They are held above the water in the vapor that is cooking off. So I do have a short uh, video here on proper steaming. How to steam vegetables. Learn how to perfectly steam any vegetable in just a few easy steps. Cut your vegetables into uniform sizes so that they cook at roughly the same rate and are all done at the same time. Add the longer cooking veggies first and then the quicker cooking veggies after a few minutes. Add one inch of water to the pot and insert the steamer basket. The surface of the water should be just under the basket. Don't have a steamer basket? Simply ball up some aluminum foil and place them in the pan. Bring the water to a boil over high heat. Distribute the vegetables over the steamer basket evenly. Cover the pot and reduce the heat to medium. Start checking the vegetables after a few minutes. The vegetables are done when you can easily pierce the thickest part of the vegetable with a paring knife. Take the vegetables out of the steamer basket when they still have just a bit of crunch in the middle. Use our guide for rough cooking times for various vegetables. So that, was your, uh, that was your quick little video on steaming. I will admit, I, uh, I do steam some things, but for me, most of the time, I blanch them or I boil them a lot of the times. And I'm bad. I am not going to just sprinkle some pepper and serve my vegetables. I do like to put butter, uh, butter on my vegetables or some form of other flavoring agent. So clearly, you guys know I am a, a fan of the, of the fatty things. I like, a, I like a sauce. I like cheese. I like cream. Um, and so mise en place in the pan, you want a small amount of water and you want something that's going to hold the food above, above the water in the vapor. Um, how do I know that my vegetables are done cooking? I can easily pierce them. Again, you can take something out and bite into it or pierce it with a fork. And um, this was at the end of the video. Broccoli and asparagus aren't going to take near as long as potatoes. So just make sure that you are not adding things in at the wrong time.